You will literally lose your older demographic of customers purely because they can't pick up the cup. So we're really confident that if we put a double shot in our takeaway and a double shot in-house, that customer is getting the same experience of strength in that coffee. And someone might actually perceive this coffee to be stronger than this coffee, especially if you start buying red cups, it will have that impact on the customer's perception. Here in the Artisti Espresso Bar, you'll notice on my beautiful Lamazocco GB5, I've got a range of crockery from large mugs, small cups, glasses, and all of this has been chosen specifically for us to ensure our coffee tastes great and the experience for the customers is great as well. So today I'm gonna to talk you through some of the th reasons that we chose our crockery, some of the things that you need to be thinking about should you be choosing crockery for your cafe or even for home to get the best experience. I'm gonna talk you through what you gotta think about. Stick around to the end, I've got something for you that's gonna really bring all this together for you. But let's learn about, I guess, what we have here. So we use Acme & Co coffee cups. They are the cappuccino range from Acme & Co um, in a range of different sizes. So this is actually called a Mighty Mug. It's a 350 mil um, large mug cup that we use for our large flat whites, lattes, cappuccinos. It's much more to size in relevance to the 12 ounce takeaway cup, which is why we've chosen that large one. Often you will find smaller 280 mil, 320 mil, and they will change the flavor of the coffee based on the coffee ratio. So we'll come back to that. This is the cappuccino range. It's 190 mils. We're really happy with a split shot of a 22.5 gram dose and our recipe. Check out our other videos on our recipe for our particular coffee, but 190 mil glass, sorry, cup for our flat whites and our cappuccinos. We do a 170 mil tulip cup. This is for our long blacks, just reserved for that. This is our Duralex. 220 mil glass. This is for our lattes, uh, chai lattes, mockers, any small drink in that one. We've got a 90 mil Duralex Piccolo glass, a 70 mil um, for espressos or short macchiatos, and then takeaway cups. So really focusing on crockery, that's the range that we stock here, and we've chosen that particular size Firstly, because of the flavor of our coffee. Now, when you think about the size of your cup, when you're researching different sizes and you're finding all of these different, different cups, you will find that there will be different sizes. There'll be different shapes, different sizes. And if you're going for something, you need it to be consistent. And you need to ideally taste what your coffee tastes like with that amount of coffee to milk ratio. Next is the amazing latte art that you want to do. Now, latte art, is definitely technique, but there's a, one of the biggest tips you might have seen in our other videos is using the right crockery. The reason we've chose this nice round bowl shape is the milk flows smoothly through the cup. If you do need to go for something like this and you choose that cup, just be mindful that you are gonna have a harder time pouring latte out in it. And that's something to definitely consider if you're a specialty coffee shop and you wanna produce a nice flowing latte out pattern through every coffee. Now let's come back to that ratio of milk again. And let's talk about takeaway versus in-house. Now we've been lucky enough to find this Mighty Cup. It's 350 mils, and it's very similar to a 12 ounce takeaway, which equates to about 360 mils. So we're really confident that if we put a double shot in our takeaway and a double shot in-house, that customer is getting the same experience of strength in that coffee. Now it's very common to find large cups in cafes that are more like a 10 ounce. So just be mindful that you will be giving your in-house customer a stronger tasting coffee than their large takeaways. Now, you might also see us with an eight ounce takeaway cup. Yes, you can get a six ounce to replicate something like this, something a bit smaller, because that six, that 190, sorry, yeah, 190 mil cup equates, would actually be a lot stronger than your eight ounce takeaway. That is why when we use this, we do a split normal. So they're getting 22.5 there from a split normal. And when you use this, there is a bit more milk. So we still, we do a double ristretto into that eight ounce cup that really cuts through that extra amount of milk. Not more coffee in the cup, but just a little bit more punch in that extraction. So that's what you'll see us trying to replicate a bit of a strength profile across our different cups. And it's really something you should consider when choosing the size of your cups. Do you wanna get crazy with color? Do you wanna get crazy with sizes and be really unique? Unfortunately, you might be signing yourself up for something that's actually really hard to manage going into the future. 
finding unique colors is amazing as long as you can buy them again. Now, if you go for a certain brand that you know you can replicate, you might pick a color that suits the aesthetic. But did you know that the color of a cup can change the way that someone perceives the coffee? Someone might actually perceive this coffee to be stronger than this coffee. And that is part of the reason that we personally chose a white cup. It implies that the coffee is a nice, smooth, clean cup. And this would imply that it's actually a stronger, richer coffee, especially if you start buying red cups, who will have that impact on the customer's perception. So choosing different colors can be interesting, but it can be hard to rebuy them. So I would consider finding suppliers that you can always rebuy that stock from should they get broken or you need to replace them. And think about the psychology of the customer drinking from that cup. Now, if it was me and I was opening a fancy specialty coffee shop, I'd love to have cups with no handles and serve 55 degree coffee, but that's just not viable. I would probably lose some clientele that can't handle getting a coffee cup without a handle. Or maybe I'm opening in a location like a shopping center and I know that I'm gonna have an older clientele that really needs to have a handle and that's what they have to hold on to be, to be able to drink your coffee. You'll be surprised how many people won't come to your cafe just because you have the wrong cups. Sometimes these larger cups can be quite hard to hold if they only have one finger hold. You will literally lose your older demographic of customers purely because they can't pick up the cup. Now, it's not ideal having a range of different cup shapes and sizes, but maybe you do have some of these on hand for those customers should they request them. But I think the goal here is to look at your clientele, especially if you're a new cafe and you're, you're wanting to see where, um, what cups are gonna suit your clientele. I don't love these for latte art. I don't think they're necessarily a specialty coffee cup in any sense, but I do definitely see them in particular accounts that are really busy and they're full of people that love a good old fashioned cup that they can really wrap their hands around. And if, you know, if Maureen wants it boiling hot, it's gonna last the whole time she's at your cafe. So consider the ergonomics of the cup based on your clientele. Now don't be fooled, your customers and your staff will break your cups, <coughs> hands down. So don't get too particular about really unique cups because you do need, do need to be able to replace them. It is something that just happens in cafes and over time, you'll need to replace cups. So be mindful of that, but also order more than you need. Unless you're gonna have a dishwasher constantly washing all your dishes and replenishing the top of the coffee machine, make sure that when you get busy, you have enough cups, you have what's on the machine, plus you have backup stock. So when you're busy, you can pull that out should you need to. Another little hidden cost that people don't consider is if you're ordering crockery online or from someone, just be mindful, the freight is actually quite, quite expensive on it, so you do wanna order enough, cover the cost of freight, otherwise you'll end up paying a lot more per cup than you really expected to. Did you know that glass is not just glass? A lot of the latte glasses you see, like this Duralex glass, and it's really commonly found in cafes because it's shatter glass. If you drop this, it will break, but it won't sh break into pieces that are really sharp. It's actually a really safe glass to have in your cafe. And it's why cafes use them so much. Same as your crockery cups. These are really durable. They will bounce sometimes on the soft mats. They, if they break, they don't create really sharp pieces. So be mindful that you are choosing crockery for safety as well. Another really exciting thing is cleaning. <laughs> cleaning your crockery, cleaning your glassware actually is something you need to consider. There's a lot of cups that actually will stain with the amount of coffee that goes through them. So be mindful that you're, you do need to find coffee cups that don't soak up the coffee and actually end up getting stained. You also need to think about making sure that your glasses are easily gonna go through the dishwasher and come out sparkling clean. Your dishwasher racks, if you buy random cups, if you buy wide cups that don't fit easily in the dishwasher, you can't put many in, you'll be washing a lot, doing a lot more loads for a lot less dishes. So be mindful, cleaning is really a consideration with these cups. And then lastly, how many cups should I order? Like I said before, you should always have plenty of cups, but that really comes down to the number of seats in your cafe and how many people you're really gonna need to serve. So I've got something for you that's really gonna help you. And that is a simple guide to what we suggest to put in a small cafe, maybe 50 seats, as to what size cups, how many of them, and don't forget about your sauces. 
you might be costing your cups, but you've got to remember, you've got to match up a saucer with every cup. So that can be a cost that people forget about. It can also be part of the planning that you've got to remember that you need to match up the colors to these saucers unless you're going for a mismatch style. So maybe one color across the board would be a lot easier. If you can, great to find a saucer that fits more than one cup, but it's not always viable and it's, that's fine. It's more so just remembering you've got to order saucers as well. So this downloadable guide, we'll put it in the description below. Click on the link, go and download the guide. If you're a cafe and you're just needing a bit of guidance on how many, what size and which to order for the different drinks, go and download that guide. It'll be super helpful. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below. Other cafe owners are watching this channel and they want to communicate, they want to share their thoughts. So you should do that too. You should tell us what you do in your cafe, suggest some brands or some other crockery ideas that you have. We love to answer the comments. We also love it when you subscribe to the channel because there's lots of content just like this, perfect for baristas and cafe owners and anyone that wants to grow their coffee business. Just hit the like video. <laughs> hit the, I can see you staring at me through. Hit the like button and the... Hit the like button and the bell icon and I'll see you next time. Thanks guys, bye.